Hello and welcome to a special edition of Inside Ascension. I'm Marshall Courtney. And I'm John Connolly. Thanks for joining us at the 2013 Louisiana Hot Air Balloon Championship and Festival from the Lamar Dixon Expo Center. In this episode, you'll see the beauty of these colorful balloons, the competition, the crowds. What an event, Marshall. Look at this crowd. It seems Ascension Parish has a big hit on our hands. That's right, John. Ascension Parish has embraced the festival and welcomed the balloon championships for the second year now. And judging by the number of people who've come out here to see the balloons, I'd say it's getting more popular each year. I'll have a report on the competition coming up. And we'll tag along with an amazing young lady from Ascension Parish and meet the pilot who took her up for a very special flight. I'll show you what's new with the River Region Art Association and the role they played here at the festival. And we'll revisit last year's festival for this episode's Dose of Lanyap. So please stay with us. It's all coming to you right now inside Ascension. For four days in late September, those magnificent men and ladies in their flying machines graced the skies of Ascension and the grounds at Lamar Dixon. The festival, in its second year in Ascension Parish, has gotten bigger with more pilots and balloons. It's also grown in numbers of people attending. So much so, the consensus is we have a hit on our hands. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'm so excited to be a part of this for the second year. St. Elizabeth Foundation is hosting the VIP tent. We've been beautifully received by the people of Ascension Parish. We hope we've been gracious and hospitable to them. And so we're having a great time. It looks to me like, uh, I know it's too early to judge how many people are here, but I'd be willing to bet that this is uh, at least a few thousand more than last year. It, and I'm being conservative. I, I suspect that you're right, although I'm a tad isolated in the VIP tent. Every time I look out, I thank God I'm in there <laughs> because it's so crowded. And I would, I, I, I'm thrilled to have all these people here. What does this event mean for Ascension Parent? It proves we can do it. It proves that we can, we can, we can get the best crowds from all around the region, that we can get them in here and out of here. It opens the door for other uh, activities in Ascension Parish at Lamar Dixon, when people can see that not only can we pull this off, but we can pull it off with class, and that it is going to be a great family time. There's nothing we can't do. This is an amazing community with, with tremendous leadership and, and a great give and take of ideas. So the future is open for Lamar Dixon and for the parish as a whole. This is an amazing family event. If you're not here this year, come next year. If you are here this year, thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here. Let's talk about this year. What do you think? I think it went great. I think uh, Friday was a little slower than last year, I thought, but Saturday came on really strong. Yeah, so now we're gonna prepare next year to be a stronger Saturday. Yeah. Uh, we have a huge crowd out here tonight. Yeah, so. Uh, shapes and I think uh, our balloon competition showed them a lot more in the afternoons than the previous. Uh, we had just 3,000 out this morning alone on Saturday morning. So uh, tomorrow Sunday morning. So we'll have a comp our final competition and uh, we'll get ready to do some more balloons. What are the numbers? Estimated numbers for the weekend? Uh, I think it'll be about 100,000 for the weekend. And what about Saturday evening? Uh, Saturday evening pulled in about 60,000 tonight. Isn't that awesome? Yes, that's great. What's that say about Ascension Parish in this area? It sounds like it's good. I, I do um, think that we got a traffic problem solved. I think we got in more people than we've ever gotten in before. We had a uh, huge assistance from the sheriff's office and uh, state police and everyone to, to come together and, and actually solve a traffic problem that we had last year. So when I, I checked the traffic in the parking lot, you know, several times and the cars were steady coming and there wasn't a, a block and a gridlock, you know. So I'm sure we blocked and gridlocked the rest of the city, you know. Uh, I did hear we backed up the interstate pretty quick, but we had some state troopers that went out and started getting things moving again. So. Year two, bigger and better. Yes, uh, year two was bigger and better than last year, so I don't know how I'm going to top next year, so I have to think about that a little bit, see how we top next year. Well, I know time. people have been grabbing you all day long, 
What are the comments you're hearing from people? Uh, I hear it's a great event. I hear a lot of good things about it. Uh, I don't think the uh, admission has slowed us down this year. Uh, I think I'm hoping it's going to give us enough money to continue this balloon festival. That's what the admission was for. Um, we're a nonprofit agency, just trying to keep this balloon festival going year after year. And you're going to have to do that, you know, with some kind of a mission when people come in and see something. Yeah. So. I believe everybody got their money's worth. I think so. I think if you definitely didn't get your money's worth, then there was a problem. You didn't stay for the balloons, but. Uh, it gets a little hot in the middle of the day, and it's great in the afternoons. And what can you say about your staff, too? Because I know you don't do it by yourself. No, I don't. Uh, we have a, a small staff that puts it on. I'm always looking for additional volunteers to come on. I think that's going to be the biggest goal for year number three, and that is going to be organizing a staff to help different aspects of the field. Right now, it's been some volunteers that, that come on and just do assign-type things, and so we're going to start putting some assignments to people uh, to handle different areas of the Balloon Festival, so I'll be looking for those to help us out. If anybody wants to help us with uh, the Balloon Festival and planning it all year long, uh, they just need to give me a call you know, uh, at our office on our website, essentialballooning.com. They can contact us uh, anytime they need to uh, to be able to get uh, information on helping and volunteering. Uh, we're also going to do a year-long crew campaign. You know, if people start to see how these balloons are and want to help, you know, uh, they'll start getting involved. So. But, yeah. Uh, the only thing I like to do is thank uh, Central Parish government for helping out. Um, they've made this possible. You know, if it wasn't for our Central Parish government, then we wouldn't be able to have this balloon festival. You know, they give us those upfront costs to see if the emission is going to help. You know, but you always need money for an event. And uh, council and Tommy Martinez and everything's been real supportive with money uh, to be the you know bring this event here for the kids and the family. You know, this is the kind of event they look for is an actual family event where the whole family comes and enjoy it. Not only that, but it's from out of town. We have, uh, in fact, we just gave away a balloon ride for tomorrow morning, okay? And it was a 25-year-old from Alexandria that won it, okay? And she's like, I'm gonna sleep in my car tonight, so I'm here for 6.30 tomorrow morning. And I'm like, no, we'll go ahead and get you a hotel room tonight since you're from Alexandria, so she's not to drive back. So she's gonna be staying here for us so she can go and fly tomorrow morning. So one night. Uh, Lamar Dixon facility is a great facility to have us at. We have a huge field. Uh, we're gonna be making improvements probably for year three uh, on the actual event. I think it's becoming, you know, the home of the Louisiana Balloon Championship. So that's also gonna be my goal is to officially make it you know, the Louisiana Hot Air Balloon Champions, the official home here at Lamar Dixon, okay? And so that way we're gonna make it field improvements and things like that to make sure the fields are actually great for the pilots and everything. There's a lot of acreage here. I think our uh, balloon meister, uh, the uh, head of the balloons this year, was able to figure out how to work Lamar Dixon and how to get you know good flights and good competition out of it. So uh, we're going to see that and see what kind of what pilots think afterwards. And if it works out well, Lamar Dixon is an excellent spot to have an event because we have the huge amount of parking. We actually opened up the grass lot this year, okay, and filled the grass lot with over 500 cars, okay. Um, so we've been real lucky. I know a lot of prayers have been answered, you know, because if we would have had it last weekend, it rained, you know. But this year we were even scared because we got eight inches of rain on this field on Monday. But with the Lamar Dixon staff and you know everybody at Lamar Dixon, we were able to clean up this field and get it straight so that we could start setting up a balloon festival for Wednesday of the this week. So uh, they were real helpful and, and take care of every business. So taking care of the kids at the festival is easy at the Children's Village. Here at the River Region Art Association's tent, kids are able to get creative with hands-on activities, face painting and all sorts of fun things geared toward introducing the young to art. Well, today we have our monthly art gumbo market. We hold the market um, once a month on the third Saturday of the month. And we're out here at Homer's House Plantation at the entrance of the, uh, the plantation. It's a beautiful, beautiful day out here. Well, the art gumbo event is to allow um, artists of all different kinds of artists, uh, craftsmen, uh, jewelry artists, painters, photographers, to have a place to display their work and to have a, just a comfortable setting that um, uh, the public can come and, and meet the artist and, and see their work and purchase their work. We've been, we've been coming out here monthly for about three or four years and um, depends on the weather. Uh, good weather falls and fall and spring. Uh, we have a lot more crowds, uh, but we're out here in summer and winter as well and we encourage everyone to come out and see our artists and meet them. We also have um, um, we call it our River Region Art Gallery. That's our satellite gallery for our artists. And we have at the at the the back of the gift shop, uh, you can buy um, 
original paintings and, and photography and all kinds of art. And that's open every day. Uh, the gift shop is open from, uh, I think, from 10 in the morning, or, or our part of the gift shop is open from 10 to 5 each day. The River Region Art Association is uh, one of our purpose of our organization is to promote our local artists. And we're not only just promoting artists in Ascension Parish, we have members from uh, Livingston Parish, East Baton Rouge Parish, and even Terrebonne. We have artists coming in from, from HOMA. Uh, so we're excited about being a, a gathering place and, and providing that opportunity for artists to, and for public to meet the artist and to learn what they're all about. Well, it's just a wonderful place to, to come and, um, and particularly the grounds are beautiful here. And so it's just a wonderful location to come and, and visit the grounds and uh, visit the plantation and um, uh, learn more about our history. And in learning about our history, you learn about today too, because our artists are, are, are artisans of today. Uh, we want to thank, first I want to thank Kevin Kelly uh, with Homeless House Plantation for allowing us to be out here each, each month. Without his support and support of the arts, um, a lot of our artists wouldn't have venues to, to bring their art to the public. Kevin's also been very generous to our artists and welcomes to, us to come on the grounds. And many times when, you, when uh, the public is out here, they'll see some of our artists actually painting on the grounds. And just across town, the River Region Art Association opened a new location that will serve as a gallery. Located just off of Highway 30 next to the Ascension Chamber of Commerce, the new gallery was host to many guests as the site was officially open for business. Well, today is the ribbon cutting for the Depot Gallery of the R River Region Art Association. And we're so excited to have such a great crowd here today. We have art uh, filling the walls. We have people filling the gallery and that's what we want. Uh, we want to encourage everyone from Ascension Parish and, and surrounding areas to come see the art, come meet our artists and enjoy the treasures that we have. Well, the you know, real exciting part, I guess, was the fact that we've had River Parish Community College that was here uh, for years. And uh, when they moved out, we had no idea, you know, what we wanted to do with the uh, the location. And Miss Joanne Eidsworth approached me uh, with the idea of moving the, uh, the art gallery here. We thought it was a great idea, and I got to give credit to my secretary, uh, Lisa Babin. She's the one that uh, approached Joanne about it and talked to her about it. So, what, you know, what, what it means to Gonzalez is just having somebody, you know, this group here locally uh, to do the type of work that they're doing right now, to offer it not only to young folks, but, but to all individuals, young and adults alike. Uh, it's a different craft, and, and it's something that, you know, we believe so much in, in sports around here that it seems like that's all we do, and it's very good. But the fact that we've got other folks that like to get involved in the art, and uh, I, I think it was a culture that we needed to be more involved with. So we're happy to have them located in it, one of the city complexes here. So it's kind of a win-win for the city, but as well as to also the art group as well. For more information on the River Region Art Association's monthly art gumbo market, the new gallery, or one of the many classes offered, visit www.riverregionartassociation.org. And from the looks on their faces, these kids are not only fired up about the balloon festival, but art as well. Now here's John Connolly and a story about a young lady with a wish, and the pilot who granted that wish for her and her family. It's a good day. I mean, every day is a good day when you go through something like she's gone through. Uh, when you wake up in the morning, it's a good day. And she's doing really, really well. But that hasn't always been the case for 17-year-old Rachel Lambert from Prairieville. January 10th, 2012 is when she was diagnosed with an anaplastic ependymoma. We went to Labonna Children's Hospital in Memphis. It was removed, all of it. She went through 33 radiation treatments and four rounds of high-dose chemo, and that was tough. We almost lost her a couple times, but her faith and She's just hanging in there and doing what she needs to do. Back in school, happy. She made the homecoming court at Dutchtown this year. Things are going well right now. Well enough for Rachel to do something she's always wanted, something different, something daring. Fly in a hot air balloon, arranged by Dreams Come True and local pilot John Good. When he says get in the basket, you got to get in the basket. You nervous? I'm excited, but like, I don't know. I've been more nervous. I was on the homecoming court. I was so nervous to walk in yeah, front of the school 
and just, like I was in six inch heels and I never walk in heels anymore and I, I was just nervous. It was so bad. Well, you're but in good hands today. I'm excited. Why do y'all uh, why do y'all do this? Just like to do stuff for the kids that that, that want to do something that, that they've never done, done before. What's it mean? I mean, you've been around. What's it mean to the families? And, it means and a lot. Children? It means a, it means a lot. I mean, you're fulfilling a kid's wish. It's something they've always wanted to do, and you're giving them the opportunity to do it. Put your right here. It's like getting on a horse and riding on a bike. St. Jude um, in November and uh, just another round of tests and she'll do fine. What's more important than kids? Got my kids out here. They love it. Why not spread the joy? And why not? Wouldn't you spread the joy too? Sharing your talents, your passion for doing something you love with anyone or everyone. How about starting with sharing your passion with just one? One like Rachel, who on every day, not just this day, when her dream to fly in a hot air balloon, high above all that she's going through, came true. How'd she do, John? She did great. She did great. She didn't even cry, didn't even scream or nothing like that, you know, like y'all did. So, uh, y'all had a good flight? Yeah, we had a great, real good flight. Didn't hit any X's, but we had a good time. What do you think about him? Trash. Okay, he's a really good guy. He's a really good pilot. The problem is there was he too much up. weight. I asked him to pick her feet up, she wouldn't pick her feet up. I jumped. I'd probably do it again if I can. I would. I have fun. I like it. I have fun. She's something else, huh? A pretty incredible woman. Well, you know, me, me every day. That's you every day. Just kidding. down gently. They get everything put together and assembled. Wait. Hmm. So James, these are these pens have little push buttons on them. So they put them in, you push the little button and then slide it in the hole. Be four sets of cables that hook up the basket. It's what we call the throat of the balloon. This one has a little loop on it that shows us that it's the top. Also, you can look at the numbers. Seven and eight is the, we consider the top of the balloon. So same concept, has a little pin with a push in it. It's pushed in, put the keeper on the end of it. Bag. You're just gonna pull straight out. We wanna keep this, keep the balloon as taut as possible. And as you're coming back down, there's some blue straps on it. We're gonna pull those blue straps off and put them in the bag. Where your muscle comes in. There we go. You'll hear people usually give a, a two or a three digit number, like 77, 90, or 105. What that refers to is the cubic feet of the balloon, the volume of the fabric part. 77,000 cubic feet, 90,000 cubic feet, 105,000 cubic feet. This one's a 90,000 cubic feet, which is kind of, we joke around, it's on the large side of average. Um, a lot of people have what we call 77s, which is a pilot plus one. This is a pilot plus two, and then a 105 would be a pilot plus three. And you'll notice too, this balloon right here that's taking off, 
it's what we call a racer. And so it's got a different, more aerodynamic design to make it climb and fall quicker, as opposed to the traditional balloon shape like mine that's more of a teardrop. This one's called Full of Blast. When I was a little kid, we'd go on the boat. I'd yell at my dad, hey, daddy, daddy, can we go full of blast? I thought it meant going fast. Well, it's filled with cold air simply because that's the, the air that we have available. Um, what that does is it gives the balloon shape so that when we light the burners, we don't damage the fabric. Light the burners, obviously, it heats the temperature of the air inside of it. You know, heat rises, and so it causes the balloon to rise. Wait on the baskets to come up. Very nice. We come down by either letting the balloon cool naturally or by pulling on this vent line. You look at the top, that circle up there opens up and lets heat out, and then gravity pushes it back up into place again. So the rules you want to follow when we're in flight, we want to face the direction of travel. If y'all see anything in our way, a tower, power lines, a tree, be like, hey Ben, check that out over there. You know, doesn't that look mm -hmm. neat? Um, a word, word about trees, sometimes we come into trees, we call them balloon breaks. Mm -hmm. They slow, we'll drag the basket through them a little bit, it slows our momentum down. On a nice calm morning like this, I don't think we'll be having to do that. But just so you know, um, but you're just, your neck just had eyes for me. If you look in the side, you can see that little slit open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what that does, it lets a jet of hot air circle around the balloon, and so it causes the balloon to spin with it. Yeah, we have two tanks. We carry 20 gallons in each tank, so a total of 40 gallons. Fuel. Obviously, um, it's a lot easier to get fuel on the ground than it is in the air, so we like to fly with a lot of redundancy on that. The reason for two tanks, once again, is redundancy. It goes up through two separate fuel hoses to two completely separate burners. That way, we only need one to fly. You'll see a lot of balloons actually only fly with one burner. Um, once again, it's just it's a redundancy sake, so that in case something goes down. We could fly probably about two and a half hours on the fuel we have on board. A rule of thumb typically is at 45 minutes to an hour, we're looking for a place to land. That way, once again, if you come in and you have to miss it, you know, you've got that redundancy in there. Yeah, yeah. And we, we have a joke, it's, it's much better to be on the ground wishing you're in the air than in the air wishing you're on the ground. <laughs> doing this, I started in 1996 when I was 12 years old. Um, my father was actually an event director for an event very similar to this one down in Brandon, Florida, right outside of Tampa. And came out and crewed and fell in love with it and pretty much kept flying um, as a crew member as long as I could. And then when I turned 15, got my student license and then progressed through the ratings, got my private, then my commercial and been flying it ever since. Um, well, obviously, uh, being a, a smaller sport like that, you know, there are you know, a handful of real pioneers that got the sport started back in the early 60s. And so all of us kind of trace ourselves through lineage back to who we trained with. And so you'll find pilots with similar styles all trained with the same people. Um, we tend to kind of, you know, our families spend time together. We tend to go to the same festivals throughout the year. Um, and so it's, it's a chance you know, to have you know, friends from Ohio and New Mexico and Colorado that you, know, you meet up with in these you know, locations and your families you know, vacation together, you raise your children together. You know, for me, in the, I was 12 when I started with it. You know, I was blessed with an amazing family, but I tease that I have this you know, second ballooning family that pretty much raised me too. Yeah. I grew up the son of a, a naval commander, and you know, he, he told me over and over again, get, I had those conversations, what are you going to do with your life? What are you going to do? And I can remember him always saying, if you can find something to do that you love, he said, you'll be so far ahead of the game. For, for me, a lot of it was the community. It was that, that sense of you have this instant family and you know, everybody looks out for each other. Um, you know, for me, one of the best things, you know, we call it hangar flying, is you know, after the flight's over with, you, know, you come back, you, you grab a Gatorade, sit around the cooler and just laugh. And, oh, you know, the coolest thing happened in the flight. And then you know, somebody else, oh, no, 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 I've got that beat. You know, you know, guess what happened in my flight? You, you sit uh -huh. there and so you're able to, you know, almost to live vicariously through three or four different flights, you know, visiting with people. And you know, every year you meet new people and then you know, they become family. It's a funny story. Um, my mom's flown with me several times. My dad has never actually been in a balloon. He was a, a P-3 pilot in the Navy, and his comment to me was, um, son, he said, in the Navy, they trained us to jump out of an aircraft when it catches on fire. He said, I refuse to get in one that's on fire before it leaves the ground. <laughs> you may look at a hot air balloon and think, it's just a balloon. But the mechanics, technicalities, and piloting of are far more complicated than that of a simple balloon. On the field, you'll hear, like, launch directors, they'll talk about, you know, going cold and going hot. Going cold means we have permission to turn the fan on and start cold inflating the balloon. When they say you're good to go hot, that means you're good to light the burners and actually stand the balloon up. Um, 
in flight you'll hear us talking about you know, I'm trying to catch the left yeah you know, that that means that there's a left turn we'll talk a lot about the deck the deck means right on the surface about four or five hundred feet above the ground um, so you'll hear pilots calling back and forth hey what are the winds where you are and they'll say hey I'm up I'm catching a good ride up at 500 feet or there was a, a strong left on the surface or on the deck um, and that's all in reference to um, which way so obviously that's orienting the direction we're flying so if I were to say there's a strong right that means that where I'm flying right now I'm going to the right of the direction that we're currently heading if I said to the left obviously we'd be veering this way okay um, so that's a lot of it you know, you'll hear us talk about um, the envelope which is the fabric portion of the balloon um, the crown line, which is this black rope that goes up, attaches to what we call the crown of the balloon, or the very apex of it. You hear a lot, um, a lot of times we'll talk about, hey, there's a shear, or we're going through a shear layer. Um, that's where the winds are two different directions. You know, one direction going this way, one going that way. And so as the balloon, the balloon's obviously about 65 feet tall. And so as the balloon comes down through that shear, part of the balloon's going this way, part of the balloon's going that way. And so like that balloon right there, when he drops, you might see it, the balloon will do this a little bit. It'll kind of question mark where it bends over because part of the balloon's still in that old wind direction. Okay. This balloon is made out of actually a fabric that's pretty unique. It's one of the only ones that was built exclusively for the ballooning community. It's called Diamond Weave Ripstop. Um, it's a 1.9 ounce ripstop nylon like your tents or backpacks are made out of. But the difference with this one, instead of the weave being a square pattern, it's a turn on angle, it's 45 degree angle diamond. Okay. Um, it's got a urethane coating on the inside which helps with, both with tensile strength and also with what we call porosity, which is how much air passes through the fabric. Okay. So the more air that passes through the fabric, the more fuel we're gonna burn in flight. Right. Um, and so that's one of the reasons that we worry about that. And you know, the balloon, if you look on the side, it's got an N number on it. It's a FAA registered aircraft, it's like an airplane. Okay. And so it's subject to an annual inspection every year, just like, a, um, just like an airplane is. Yeah, it, it's funny, people throughout the years, they've tried every you know, type of material imaginable. Back in the 70s, they tried aluminum ones, they tried ones made out of fiberglass, um, they tried everything. And they keep coming back to wicker, because um, wicker, it, it's extremely flexible, but it's extremely resilient at the same time. You know, a lot of times we'll come in and it's a nice, peaceful landing and just barely you know, brush the surface. There's other times we joke around that the ground was definitely aware of our arrival. Um, and so in those situations, the wicker kind of flexes and moves with it, and then doesn't break, it retains its shape. Yeah. Um, people freak out when they see the wicker and go, oh my gosh, it's just wicker. What they don't see is the stainless steel superstructure that goes you know, through the wicker and then goes under the basket and under the floor. Um, so there is, there's a stainless steel structure that is you know, kind of holding the balloon up and then the wicker just wraps around that, both for aesthetics and also to, to keep everything in it. Yeah, we, we joke around that you pretty much to be a balloonist, you have to also be a micrometeorologist. You have to, you know. That was one thing. You have to know how to read the winds, um, read the forecast. Um, not only that, but know the area and know what, what the particular peculiarities are of the weather in that area. Um, you know, you've got areas of the country where if you, for example, in Tampa, where I train to fly, you know, we get up in the morning and there'll be thunderstorms off the coast out in Tampa Bay. You know, this, you know, raging away, you'll see the lightning going and, you know, pilots from Ohio will come down and go, oh my gosh, what are you doing flying? Well, we know that's the pattern. The storms roll off the shore in the mornings, they roll back on shore during the afternoon. So we know as long as we're down by a certain time, we're safe. Um, where in Ohio, if you had a storm within 50 miles of you, you'll fly because you never know when another cell is just going to pop up over a field. Um, and so a lot of it, so much of it is weather and knowing that. Um, and then from there, you know, it, it's feel. It, it's so much of it knowing, you know, how long to burn. Um, no, if I burn right now, we're not going to go up. I'm going to burn. It's going to take time for that heat to get to the top of the balloon and then cause lift to happen. Mm -hmm. Same thing when I vent, it'll be, the tendency sometimes when you want to get down on the ground quick is that you'll vent and nothing happens, so you vent some more and then vent some more, but you don't wait for the, the venting to take effect. And so next thing you know, you're doing this, you're venting, venting, nothing's happening, all of a sudden, you know. And so you, you have to anticipate it. So we joke around um, with it that we're in a car, you know, you see a stoplight and you need to stop, so you brake. With us, it's three blocks back, we're saying, okay, we need to stop, so let's go, let's go ahead and start doing something now so that when we get there, it'll happen. The big thing is when we come into landing, you want to remain facing the direction of travel. You want to bend your knees ever so slightly and then hold on. You can grab hold of these brown bolsters here. You can grab hold up here. There's some handles in the front and the back of the back that you can grab hold of. Big thing is just don't grab anything red or my neck. Those are the two no-nos. <laughs> um, and then the most important thing of all, when we land, stay in the basket until I tell you it's okay to get out. We just, what we'll do, we'll lay, literally lay the balloon down the exact same way we put it up. I'll turn the burners off. Um, Eric will grab that crown line, he'll walk out, he'll literally pull it down. As he's pulling it down, we'll pull that top cap completely out so the balloon will start to deflate. Yeah. 
Um, and then from there, usually I get stuck doing it. We do what's called we milk the balloon, which you pretty much get it, you straddle it, one knee on each side of it, and just squeeze the air out and make it into a streamer, and then throw it back in the bag. I would say actually, you know, my, my favorite part probably the pack bag. And afterward, is that you know you had, you had that adrenaline rush, you just landed, you had this great flight, and once you, you see the crew again, so it's like it's like this reunion. Um, and you're, you're, they've had they, they have, usually have a story about the chase. Oh my gosh, I got stuck behind this crazy farmer in his tractor, and he wouldn't let me around, or oh you know we almost died. You know, jackknife the trailer in the middle of a bridge. You know, it was awesome. And then you know we've got a story. So you know, everybody's adrenaline's pumping, and we're laughing, sharing stories. And you know for me that's that's the best part. Like for me, it's community. Yeah. It's and what's better than a little competition amongst friends? Here are your results for the 2013 Louisiana Hot Air Balloon Championship. In the Gonzales Competitors event, your first place winner is Maury Petrin of Kansas with 11,872 points. In the Louisiana State Championship event, Robert Ambo of Gonzales, Louisiana took first place with 5,808 points. And in the Lanyap event, Will LaPointe from Oklahoma earned first place with 5,622 points. Our thanks and congratulations go out to the Ascension Festivals and Cultural Council, whose hard work and dedication made this year's festival a huge success. You heard Brad Walker earlier. They're already working on next year's event, and they can use your help. If you've always wanted to get close to ballooning, this is a great opportunity to do it. Go to ascensionballooning.com to volunteer. Marshall, that wraps up this episode of Inside Ascension. Remember, you can always reach us by emailing insideascension at apgov.us. But before we leave you, we revisit last year's festival with this encore dose of lanyap from the music stage. Here's Gal Holiday and the Honky Tonk Review. So long, everybody, and please keep watching Ascension 21. <laughs>
don't 